This is Twit. I'm pretty excited about this news because everybody and their, and their brother, including my brother, has been asking me for a <laughs> OnePlus invite. I don't have, I don't have any invites, but it turns out that you might not need an invite to get a OnePlus. Uh, OnePlus staffer did a Reddit AMA this week or last week and said that OnePlus One might finally have a pre-order system. No invitation required pre-order system. Uh, and that isn't a contest that requires you to post selfies uh, or, you know, smash your phone. You, It might just be a straight pre-order uh, system that might go live in October. So, yeah, you might be able to pre-order a OnePlus One. I'm a little dubious about this. I mean, it's September. Today is September. Mm -hmm. It makes me a little nervous that they're like, we might have this by October <laughs> because the pre-order system does seem like a big thing. Yeah. Uh, and it does seem like you'd have a harder schedule than that. It also seems like for the holidays, this is... You know, given that it's September 2nd, <laughs> the question of whether or not you have this should be a binary yes or no at this point. Uh, but they're like, yeah, we might have this. So who knows? Uh, you know, they, they might do it. It doesn't mean that the phones are going to ship. This is a pre-order system. So right. it doesn't mean the phone's going to ship when you actually order it. It doesn't even necessarily mean the phone's going to ship by the holidays, which is also kind of a kind of a bummer. I mean, who knows? Maybe it will. I, I, I would love it if OnePlus One said, hey, order your phone. You'll have it by the holidays. But um, takeaway... Invite system is getting killed, which is great for for all of us, I think. Uh, so, Jason, you're going back to your One Plus One at, even after using the 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 me the me four. The me is that four, right? the the uh, Xiaomi. I almost said Huawei. The, the Xiaomi. Xiaomi. Huawei. <laughs> me four. Lots of fun names. Uh, yeah. So I reviewed the Me Four on Before You Pie by today. Before You Pie. It's a new show where we. Oh, that's pie. a great. I totally would watch that show. <laughs> Before watch the hell out of it. It's actually before you pie. So before you, you, you pie, eat yeah. dinner yeah, yeah, on the yeah. show. Right, that's, that's fine by me, too. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so twit.tv slash BYB. I reviewed this on today's episode. I'd say the takeaway on the Me 4 is it's a fantastic device, and there are a lot of really great pluses about it. The design, the screen. Um, actually, uh, parts of the software experience, I have to say, are pretty pretty darn cool as well. The selfie um, gender age recognition. That was a little weird, yes. Mm -hmm. When you do a selfie, yes, exactly as shown last week. Uh, the camera, big downside. I, really? Man, I took a lot of pictures this weekend while I was camping in bright light. You know, great picture situations and uh, just lots of blurriness and mm -hmm. and uh, all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, it's just the fact that, you know, it's a Chinese phone. And when you're importing it into the States, it comes with a little bit, you know, some drawbacks in the software side, some th things that you're used to ha working well on your normal Android device. You know, there's some pictures. Some of them look okay, but I had to really comb through. That's the problem. I took tons of pictures and I had to comb through to find ones that look reasonable. Um <laughs> you know, kind of out of focus and everything. So, uh, so yeah, there's just weird little things here and there that over the course of the week, I'm kind of like, as much as I love parts of this phone, I think I'm probably going back to the one plus one. So the one plus one wins again. Wow. For now until right. the next goodness, whatever that may be. Validated, validated. There you go, Gina. <laughs> 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 Bad contest at all. Validated. Yeah. Frank, Franco, I'm, I'm curious. Are you pure Nexus right now? Are you st running the Nexus 5? Or I know that the kernel supports OnePlus One. Do you have one of those devices that you test against? Yeah, I have one here. Is that the uh, phone that you you say is kind of your daily driver at this point? Or what are you using yeah, right now? Yeah, I've been using the OnePlus One since I've got it because the battery life is so good. Yeah. I don't have to think about plugging it every night or just I can just use it whatever I want any time in the day and just never bother thinking about the battery that that's the only thing that I care yeah, at this important. point because uh, Lexus 5 unfortunately has a very poor battery I don't know if it's the LG uh, technology or whatever but it gets warm really quick and then all hell breaks loose so yeah it's a it's an awesome device. I love it. The camera is awesome as well. So it's almost stock Android. So I cannot complain. That's true. Now, is the wind going to be taken out of the sails by the time this hits market in a oh I want one I can easily buy it sort of way? This is what happens. I mean, when it, when it's not a desired, sought after, trying to get an invite when it's just available. You know. Well, and and yeah. I mean, by the time it, you know, even let's just say pre-orders October ships yeah. November. Let's right. just say that's the case. Like, when did we start hearing about the invite system for OnePlus One? Was this like the beginning of the summer? 
little bit earlier than that, May-ish, I want to say. Uh, so May, exactly. June, July, August, September, October. That's almost a solid half year later. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, take, yeah. take in consider. Sorry, talk, take in consideration that they are a startup. Yeah. Um, they'll probably are tight on money. I guess. Uh, they are if they haven't lifted the invite system, it's because they are shipping all the phones that that, that they they create at this point. Yeah. So people like to bash and say bad things about the company. And about the, the whole system, but they probably don't know everything that's been happened since the beginning. And I'm sure they they would have just had pre-orders or normal orders if they could. So it's been a huge success, I think, so far, at least for what I've seen. So I th I'm sure they're doing everything they can to to have it shipped as soon as possible, hopefully by the holidays because I'm sure everyone wants to buy the phone. But yeah, just take it in consideration to everyone that's listening to this show uh, that it's not easy. It's not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> because all those Samsung and, and, and HTCs and they have all the money, all the factories, everything to make everything whenever they want with no rush, with the, the, sorry, no delay. And yeah, take it, that in consideration. They're a startup. So they're doing fine. I think. Yeah. And there aren't, yeah, you know, makes sense. yeah, I, I, I'd agree with yeah. that. There aren't a whole lot of startup phone companies, you know, that, that you hear about hardware manufacturers. Yeah. There's none. Yeah. No startup has, has done this before. Right. Uh, they keep trying and the, the black phone or the yeah. whatever they like to call it. There's mm -hmm. no other startup that's done that like this. So let's give them a little credit. And you have so, to you have to fair. definitely also give them credit for the fact that when they came out, you know, marketing has been a big a big part of what they're doing, and it's hard to compete in a in a landscape of Samsungs and Apples that have so more noise. marketing money than God yeah. um, to throw at their devices. Yet they've been able to maximize what money they do have, and they said very early on uh, the uh, flagship killer, and that was a bold statement. Yep. Yet. Here we are a few months later, and a lot of people who have very strong opinions about devices uh, are saying it's the phone for them. It's their yep. phone. So largely, they've lived up to that that declaration, which is kind of an impressive thing, don't you think, Gina? No, it, yeah, it is. I mean, they've they've won over sort of the the, the power users, right? And that's a that's a fantastic place to be. Mm -hmm. And they've really had to balance. I mean, on one hand, I feel like they should be aiming all their resources toward getting their manufacturing chain together so that they can ship these phones, right? I mean, the company only does well, it only brings in profit if it ships phones. And it seems like they've been doing a lot of marketing things, but they have to keep the buzz going, right? So like that's that's what the, the selfie contests are about, and the smash your phone and the invite system, you know, at all. Um, but you know, I don't know. Part of me thinks they have Oppo behind them, at least as an investor, if not more. Uh, yeah. Maybe they could they could turn you know turn the switch and, and get some more support from Oppo to, to to just build more phones faster. And but I hear you, Frank. Franco's got a great point. This kind of thing is hard. They've got to balance both keeping the buzz and keeping keeping the marketing and the desire there, uh, but also you know making sure that they can build these phones as fast as they can sell them, which they obviously haven't been able to do so far. And um, you know, and I want them to do well. It's the phone. I love. I love the phone. Despite the marketing, you know, screw ups. I really love the phone. It's a great device, and I want more people to have it. And I also want fewer people to ask me for an invite. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I love. <laughs> this is what I want. I love how the pendulum swings. Mm -hmm. How you know, a couple of weeks ago, it's it's bad one plus one and doing right. the selfie contest <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. What's <laughs> w What's crazy about that yeah. though, right, is that the hardware is obviously good because because yes, people to want feel it. so passionate about about some of their yeah. blunders. Yet still, it's really hard to maneuver away from it because yeah. it's kind of that good. Yeah. So, yeah. So well, I think I think no no one remembers the Nexus Four thing, the fiasco when Google opened up the the pre-orders, and then like two months after, uh, the phones were like out of stock. Yeah. They That's right. They weren't actually shipping them. So and they are Google, and they've done crap, and these guys are actually selling the phones through an invite system. So they are not um, having a pre-order system. People are not waiting. If they if they can buy it, if they have the invite, they will buy it. So, well, I think people should think about this stuff. Mm -hmm. And 
and don't bash so easily. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, agreed. Uh, and then and then I wake up and I realize I live on the internet and everybody and bashes that, everything. Unfortunately, everybody for better or for worse. Don't read the comments. Yeah, I know. Stay away from the comments. Boils down to don't read those comments. Just yeah. keep on moving.